Hi everyone, I'm excited to share with you our latest product announcement. Before we get started, let me introduce two of my closest colleagues who will help share the details of our exciting announcements. Lisa and hi, Lisa. Thanks, Tim. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Erickson. I'm a Senior Director of Product Management for NetBackup. And my name is Hai Nguyen. I'm a Senior Director of Appliances Product Management. I've been here with Veritas now for 12 years. As you heard from Doug, today we announced our multi-cloud data management platform designed specifically to help today's enterprise regain control and visibility across their entire data estate on-prem, in any cloud, and most importantly, across clouds, allowing organizations to harness the benefits of the cloud while ensuring all of their data will be 100% protected, available, and compliant. Lisa, one of the cool things about the platform is that it includes our portfolio of as-a-service offerings. That includes SaaS protection, cloud storage, disaster recovery, analytics, application availability, data privacy, data discovery, comm surveillance, information governance. Do you have anything more to announce in this area? Absolutely, we're further expanding our SaaS offerings. Um, and in the spirit of enabling our customers with a more automated, efficient, cost-effective solution, the first thing that we're announcing is that we're taking the core of what NetBackup is and all the work that we have also done around making NetBackup more into a cloud-native architecture and going to provide it as backup as a service. So we're really excited about that. There's a couple things in there that I think we should really highlight and talk about. The first piece of that is that we're taking this experience and really making it service level objective driven for our customers. So instead of worrying about everything that you have to configure to achieve an RTO and RPO outcome, it's just simple right there for you. Then we discover those workloads. They're then protected and then recoverable. Fantastic. You think about the outcome, not about how you got there. Yeah, yeah. The second piece of that is that the customer no longer has to worry about the underlying infrastructure and managing that. So again, what you're worrying about the outcome, you're worrying about, am I protecting the right applications? Am I meeting those RTOs and those RPOs? And you're not having to worry about, hey, am I capacity planning my underlying infrastructure correctly? And then also in, the, in this first type of release, uh, we are targeting more of the modern workloads, the cloud workloads, and we'll eventually expand those. So we're pretty excited about backup as a service. Me too. The second, because we're not done, the second um, expansion to the SaaS portfolio is around a unified global management solution that that Doug had mentioned. And we're also really excited about this for our customers because now our customers who are running net backup, even if it's on premises, software, with an appliance, any, any of those form factors can now get true global management from a single pane of glass. And I wanna give a couple of examples. In very large environments, visibility and control is very, very challenging. Because as you scale out, you get more net backup domains, and then how do you manage and see across those? So the unified management solution is really going to fix that. Um, you know, as an example of that, if I wanted to now monitor my jobs across 10 domains or five domains, instead of having to do that in multiple different places, I can do that through a single console. Another example, and it's not everything that we're doing, but it's, it's a really important one, is changes to policies, right? So if I have a standardized change to a policy across all of those domains, instead of having to go to multiple places, go to one place and push it out. And so we'll just continue to expand that type of functionality to give our customers that outcome of that true kind of global management. Here's the second piece of that, because like you're gonna say, Lisa, that's not as a service, but it is because we're offering it as a service. So it is truly global management as a service. So a customer also doesn't have to worry about standing up that underlying management infrastructure to do all that work. You know, you, you mentioned control and visibility, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our IT analytics offering that optimizes that data protection visibility across your entire estate, whether that's on-premise, hybrid cloud, or multi-cloud. In fact, we just had a new version release that's chocked full of content. Oh, we have an incredible list of new functionality. If we had more time, we could go on for hours. I know. 
but I'd like to at least highlight two. First, we have the ransomware scorecard. It takes the information that data analytics collects along with a questionnaire that the customer answers, and it gives the customer an overall score of their ransomware resiliency and their readiness around data protection and recovery. It looks at things like, is everything protected? Um, do I have an offsite copy? Am I using immu immutable storage? And it combines all that information to say, here's your ransomware scorecard. And not only that, but it gives you recommendations based on best practices, how to improve that score. Now, the second thing I wanna highlight in that release is we now have Microsoft Azure subscription visibility. So the first customer to jump on that was Veritas. So we have hundreds of Microsoft Azure subscriptions approaching close to a thousand and managing those individually was pretty heavy. It was a heavy lift for us to do it manually. Now, when we configure our analytics uh, Azure data collection policy, there's a new subscription tab. You can go to that and you can view all your subscriptions either individually or group them together so you have control of those subscriptions and the costs associated with it. Sounds great. Now, since we're talking about as a service, do you have any announcements to make about our SaaS protection? Yes. So in our SaaS offering, we currently offer lots of workloads, Microsoft 365, Slack, Box, Google Workspace, Teams, OneDrive, I could go on. But I'm really excited to announce that we're adding Salesforce to the portfolio. So we're gonna be able to give you data protection capabilities using the same single tenant architecture that gives you petabyte scale, enterprise level security, and unmatched performance. Really excited about that. And then customers, um, beginning in October through December, can sign up for an early preview of the offering. And then we're targeting general availability in January. Those are great updates for our as-a-service cloud offerings. But Lisa, what have we done to help organizations who prefer to deploy and manage net backup, but do it for themselves? Doug mentioned cloud scale technology earlier, but can you remind the audience of what that is and what's changed since March? Yeah, so cloud scale technology we introduced back in 10.0 and it is providing our customers with a more cloud native approach to net backup. So it is net backup, um, but we've taken net backup and we have uh, put it into a form factor whereby customers can deploy it natively in a Kubernetes environment. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, the great thing with that is that uh, it works not just in AKS, but we recently added AWS EKS support. So containerization is an underpinning of this. It allows that kind of flexibility for customers to go more into a cloud native environment, run it there with a better, better TCO. Um, the other piece of, pieces of this, though, is not just going to Kubernetes, because it's in why do you why why do you do that in the first place, right? So I just hinted at it, which is when you're in that kind of container world, it gives you then the ability to start to instantiate your application more into composable services that can then start to be elastic. And those platform services and data protection can then start to scale out and scale back. A really good example of that is what we have done with the snapshot service inside of NetBackup where that basically has a service that can go ahead and scale out as the number of snapshots jobs increase and then go ahead and scale back. Cloud scale technology, as we continue to iterate on it, that kind of methodology will become part of all of those services. Um, so that's been a key component. The third piece of that is, and it's in an underpinning of, of what I just said, is, is really kind of automation, right? So you take that cloud scale technology that is now Kubernetes based. We now decompose the services so they can run inside of containers. Those services can then scale out and scale back, right? That's the transition we're going through in cloud scale technology. That's a form of automation. But then you start to build even more automation on top of that. So you not just go ahead and automate how, how the infrastructure scales out and scales back, uh, but you start to add things that may be more influenced by 
AIML, right? So you start to get predictive behavior in terms of when you need to do that versus just reacting to a scenario going on in the environment. So we'll be working on that as, as well. Well, Tim, you've been teeing up these topics, but I know one topic near and dear to you is cybersecurity and resiliency. So why don't you give our audience an update on our capabilities around air gap, immutability, and zero trust? You know me so well. Ever since we added immutability and indelibility to our Flex appliances, there's not a single customer conversation that doesn't have these non-made-up words come up. <laughs> now, if we look at our latest release of NetBackup 10.1, we've eliminated the need for additional infrastructure or ancillary software to isolate and protect the data from threats. This means we've expanded our air gap support by adding an additional layer of isolation or an isolation boundary around a customer's existing data. And we've also added a pull method into the system where the isolated environment pulls out into the production environment and requests data. This makes sure that no problematic uh, material, malware, uh, infected data makes its way into the recovery vault at any point. And this can be easily deployed both in our appliances or in a software form factor for those customers who want to build their own infrastructure environments. We've also added the ability to add anomaly detection information or alerts and malware detection into a SIM or SOAR. What that means is you can take that data and swizzle it up with other system logs from network devices or servers and make sure you're leveraging the power of all the information in your environment. And you don't just have the information, but then you can create automation on, on that data. That means you could stop backups or you could do a, de a duplication or any other kind of action when a backup image has been infected. And don't forget about that ransomware scorecard that I mentioned earlier that really gives you a measure of your resiliency and, and recoverability um, around an attack. All right, well now I've got that out of my system, let's switch gears. Gartner predicts by the end of this year, more than 75% of global organizations will be running containerized applications in production, a huge jump from the 30% in 2019. This is happening both in the cloud and on-premises. Now, Lisa, I understand that Backup has done some pretty cool things for our customers using containers across multiple clouds. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So besides what we just talked about, which is providing NetBackup as a platform that runs natively in Kubernetes, which is us taking our own technology and offering it in containers, we're also able to use NetBackup to protect uh, Kubernetes-based workloads. So we've done a couple of different things. Um, the first is, is how we run, right? So we go ahead and we stand ourselves up as a, a Kubernetes native type of application. Now you might say, so what? But that's actually really important to the folks that are operating those Kubernetes environments because now they can work in context of their Kubernetes environment, whatever distribution they're running, the configuration that's there, and NetBackup is there versus kind of a separate type of approach. So it offers some simplicity there. But in terms of backing it up, it is also what we call application awareness. So understanding Kubernetes and that you have a Kubernetes cluster, um, labels, you know, the, the pieces and parts of Kubernetes that you need to understand to back, properly back it up and, and recover it. So we've also done that. So that's a benefit of running Kubernetes native. Also, we've taken a standardized approach regardless of where the customer runs those Kubernetes workloads. So whether that happens to be OpenShift or GKE or Tanzu or in the cloud, we can back those up. Now, with our technology, here, here is what is even better for a customer. I can back those up in one distribution and recover them in another distribution. Wow. So you have portability. And you get all of the net backup enterprise class capabilities. There's a lot of value of what we've done from how we've instantiated ourselves in a Kubernetes environment all the way through how we're actually doing that backup and recovery. Oh, that's great. And, and it's a really great story for protecting and recovering application data. But hi, what have we done and released to our customers to help them with the availability of their container-based applications? 
Well, you know, we've taken our 25 years of experience in delivering high availability solutions and applying it to containers. Recently, we just released Veritas InfoScale for Kubernetes, and really it provides resiliency to the containers so that our customers can run their applications in a container with confidence. Wow, great updates on Kubernetes protection and availability. Thank you. Lisa, I know we hear a lot from our customers on the protection of cloud native workloads. Now, what's new in 10.1 in this area? Yeah, this, this is really awesome too. So before I say what's new, I just want to remind that um, you know, we've supported some of those cloud services for quite a long time. So whether it's EC2 instances or Azure VMs, or we were just talking about Kubernetes. You know, Kubernetes also is, can be viewed as a cloud native workload. So that's great for our customers. But what we started to do in this release is add direct support uh, for DBPaaS, so database platform as a service workload. So we've added 13 new DBPaaS workloads in those re this release across Azure, AWS, Google. Some examples of that are Azure SQL, Azure Postgres SQL, AWS DynamoDB, and we'll continue to expand those. So just adding to that long workload list that NetBack of supports, but now more directly into those cloud native DBPaaS workloads. Well, thank you both. This has been a really fun and informative discussion. We're providing a valuable solution set to you, our customers, empowering you to successfully manage, protect, and recover, and ultimately truly control your data. Whether you're expanding in the cloud or at the edge, or building a hybrid strategy for your on-prem environment. To get more details about the powerful innovations we've discussed here today, our team has put together a series of in-depth technical sessions. If you'd like to learn more, please find links to all of those sessions on the same event page you're viewing this video on. See our technology for yourself in action.